Well, well, well. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Hello. <laughs> goodbye. I think of hello, goodbye, and sometimes it's the only thing that's getting me through. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> goodbye. goodbye. Hello. I have watched, not to skip ahead, but I have watched Hello, Goodbye, and Did it was, scream? I screamed, but it also was... It served. It kind of isn't. It served. It did what it needed to do. There was one, but moment, it was hello, goodbye at heart. Oh, for sure. There was one moment though where I was like, "That's Samantha." Yeah, their chemistry together is undeniable. They have great chemistry. Cause I bought that they were like bosom buddies, beloved sister, friends yeah. forever. Even like knowing their entire history. And what a history that is. We need a feud. Series about SJP yeah. and Kim Cattrall, but it probably and has, needed to happen while they're still alive. It probably has to wait till they're both gone, and then by that point, isn't Ryan Murphy friends with SJP, or am probably. I just making that up because he's gay and I view her probably as a that. friend to all gays? Mm-hmm. Okay, that would be the most epic feud of all time. <sighs> they they really should just bury the hatchet. Get over it, I say to both of them. Grow up. You're both grown Their chemistry is undeniable. Even when not talking to each other at all, they have their character's chemistry is electric. Even being in a room where it's like two completely different crews Mm -hmm. are set up, like where the director of the episode isn't even allowed Mm -hmm. to be in the same room, their chemistry reads through all the frequencies, all dimensions, and it is like they never left each other's side. I loved in the background the green screen of Swinging London. Oh, there's Big Ben. <laughs> Just her <laughs> rousing through Soho, old Soho town. One night in Soho. One night in Soho. Um, Anyways. Do you think, would you say Carrie and Samantha were the best friends or Carrie and Miranda? I think Carrie and Miranda. I guess they're all best friends. I viewed Carrie as being best friends with all of them. Like if they would each individually say Carrie Bradshaw's my best friend. Who's her best friend though? Big. I'd say. <laughs> I think yeah. Miranda. I'd say it's like a crapshoot between Miranda and Samantha. I think probably if we're being realistic and we weren't taking the feud of the century, mm-hmm. like if we took that out and left things mm-hmm. in the universe that they should have been in, mm-hmm. she and Samantha actually would have been best friends now because they would be single. I think. And un, well, un, don't, don't have children. So I think that they would spend a lot more time together. I always took it as Carrie, Miranda, and Samantha and Charlotte. Because Samantha never and saw... Charlotte were so opposite that they, I think they like completed each other. That's my take. I viewed Charlotte as like Samantha's little sister in a way, or that Samantha got really fed up with Charlotte. And Samantha and Miranda <laughs> were Lawler friends. Mm-hmm. They like lolled together. But I think Mary, I think Miranda and Carrie were best friends. Well, now they're stabbing, Carrie's stabbing her in the back. I know. Day after day after day. Can you believe? If, if like. If you befriended both, like, I basically have like three exes. If you befriended two of them, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I I stopped by and saw, I went out of my way to go see your ex. If you're going to have a dinner at your apartment and you say two of your exes exes are on the guest list to this intimate dinner, I'd be like, why are you doing this to me? I'd be like, fuck yourself. I'd be so mad. That's not, I'm sorry. That's dirty. It's weird. Granted, Miranda. Shabli has put people through the ringers. Shabli has brought it on herself Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, but still loyalty. Shabli's finally getting her shit together. And I think she should be rewarded for that by not siding with Che Diaz over her. Steve, I get Steve. I could, if any, even though like Carrie did have like a personal relationship with Steve. Che out of the question, Che is gone from this group. Carrie 
when Carrie's like, I don't know, fifteen people after the she wins the lot the school raffle for like a Michelin star. Mm-hmm. When she's like, I don't but know. Is it that Halloween party? Is that the yeah. raffle to which they are referring? I think so. Carrie just hangs out with at the school, mm-hmm. but <laughs> Carrie's life is just <laughs> going to school functions for a friend. Well, I guess Charlotte, but like LTW and Carrie are not friends. I know they're really not, and yet Naya here we are. and Carrie are, are not, not friends. friends. Naya would not want to be friends with Carrie Bradshaw. No, Naya would be like, "I'm too busy getting dick down." Wouldn't Naya be like, "This white woman is part of the problem, yes. not the solution." She's too her, busy. Her, and her seashells book. But I'm like, what? But she's Naya like, would also not be w- hanging with Miranda. Let's be honest. If things were. Neither here nor there. I think there. Miranda over Carrie probably, but mm-hmm. I think she would be annoyed by Miranda because Miranda's trying too hard. Yeah. But like, I I just, when Carrie's like, do I even know 15 people? I'm like, are you kidding me? You're the toast of New York. You're the toast of the town. You've been, your skinny legs have been trotting around this town for 35 years as we get in this episode because we come up on her and Aiden and she goes... You know, I've lived in New York for 35 years and I've never been to Coney Island. Her being dragged to Coney Island doesn't sit right with me. No. This whole Coney Island like setting really threw me. It feels very afterlife. Mm, Coney Island's very New York. Okay. So you say. I never went there. But, <laughs> but it is like it is a thing I see people do. It's a thing for sure. But. In this universe, I don't know. There's something about. It. I think it's just the lighting feels it. Oh, mm-hmm. so much lighting in this show. The cinematography, specifically of sex and or fucking and just like that, is as though these people died and the show is taking place in the afterlife. Doesn't it feel like that? Yeah. Um, they go. Aiden's like, well. Steve's opening up his new bar on Coney Island on the boardwalk. Of course, it's probably like $18 million. <laughs> Aiden's investing in it. Yeah, of course. But Aiden walks up and he goes, Hey, Steve looks great, <laughs> man. And he goes, and Steve goes, I hope you have too much trouble getting here. <laughs> and Aiden goes, no, man, we just took four subway rides. And I'm like, Carrie on the subway. Something's not right Carrie with Ms. Never, Bradshaw. Carrie never took the subway, even in the original. She took the subway once, and then she remembered to get to the stock exchange, but it was like in a pinch. Mm-hmm. But she, um, her little heels aren't made for subways. Uh, Aiden goes, Steve goes, you guys want some beer? And Aiden's like, you guys, you got beer here? And he goes, I'm a bartender. I always got beer. <laughs> Carrie goes, Steve, how did you find this place? And I imagine him going like, I was sundown and I came to on the boardwalk. Eating, Basically. Eating an old piece of pepperoni. He goes, when I was going through all the things with Miranda, I came down to, <laughs> I came down to Cody Island. I found myself over there. And it's like a bench. And he, goes, he woke and up on back, a park bench. And I look back and I saw this glorious and I... Took me back to being a kid with my brother out here eating clams and hot dogs. And Carrie goes, you were (laughs) so hot dogs and clams. (laughs) I was like, that's fucking rude. Take it back. And then Aiden gets a call from Wyatt and he's like, hey, you fucker. Aiden's like, mom's being so annoying. She's not letting me do anything. You need to come back here now and set her straight. (laughs) He's an incel. He's scary. He's on like whatever... Brady's been uh, like he's a troubled teen he's a child of a broken home as someone who's been down the same Wyatt path I see him but I also would say I see you I see you Wyatt but also it's time for you to go to wilderness Mm -hmm. but he's definitely getting like radicalized and like a YouTube. They need to set his ass straight. Yeah. Ground him. Why does he have why does he have a key or access to a house if he knows that you're out of town and his dad and he's like accessing beer and then has a key to the car? And then Miranda well then Carrie's like, Hi Wyatt and Wyatt goes, Shut up <laughs> No, he doesn't say that, but basically <sighs> Can we talk about how the human rights league or wherever the fuck Miranda's working now? seems like a very toxic work environment. It does. Right? 
Miranda comes out to one. I think one of the interns. One of the interns is there. The other blonde one she is got, mysteriously missing. She got she got the uh, the she axe. got the boot, the yeah. old heave ho. Mm-hmm. But the boss lady comes back, and the intern girl is like, "Oh, you're back!" And she goes, "Take that judgy tone out of your voice. Wipe that smile off your face." I was like, "What the fuck is your problem?" Yeah, she's like. Five weeks of maternity leave felt like a prison. And my warden, he let me out for the day. And then Miranda goes, who's that? And she goes, my son. Miranda goes, <laughs> I was and like, she goes, God. I was out for 12 weeks. Felt like an eternity. <sighs> Should These working women. And then Miranda, she goes, we got to go to the UN. <laughs> and then Miranda, you're my point person. Hobbs, you're on the <laughs> Hobbs, you're on the team. UN team. You're on the we'll task be, team. We're touching down on 48 hours. <laughs> I was like, what do they do here? I don't know. They watch. <laughs> it's like a, it's like the Ministry of, what's the like 19, like the Ministry of Defense. What is it called? Is it the Human Rights I, Connection? I, I think it's supposed to be the Human Rights Committee, the HRC. But it's, instead it's called the Human Rights Watch. They're just watching. They're watching. They're just keeping. It's like the, uh, the Southern, what is that? That declares things terrorist groups. Mm-hmm. Like hate groups. What is that? Law Center. Anyway. um, Charlotte's giving Sam Smith a tour of Alex Israel's art. Who Alex Israel just does like. Bad art. (laughs) Ugly. It is. What? So Charlotte's giving. I I have my own opinions about the art. I wouldn't want it in my house. Get that art out of my house. Charlotte's giving a private tour. Wait. Of Alex Israel to Sam Smith and their friend. And Sam Smith is literally seven foot two. I didn't realize that Sam Smith was a tall girl. Sam Smith is, they are like giant ass. That makes me think completely differently. I, I'll admit it, I'm heightest. And when I realized that Sam Smith was tall, got a little respect. They... Uh, they check out with you a little now. They check out with me a little bit. I'm I'm more accepting of there's a tall giant drink of water. Ass. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be their new like gig. Is like Charlotte's. No, oh my god, thank God we didn't. no. But there were like photos of them like having a. They had their own trailer. They were on set. I was like, wow. I think you get your own trailer when you act in a show. Like, no, I know, but it just made it seem like they they were gonna be like a huge role. A guest star, but mm-hmm. nope. Charlotte's just giving a tour. And it's she- better this way. She's trying to sell a painting to Sam, and then this show is obsessed with trotting out non-binary superstars and having people lose their shit over them. Yeah, so Rock calls emergency, emergency, Charlotte, and her uh, co-worker's like, hey, Charlotte, your annoying child is calling and threatening to... No, I'm just kidding. So Charlotte goes running to get take Rock's call, and then the co-worker looks at Sam and goes, I'm such a fan. Yeah. And this is like the first of many fan encounters that are going to happen over this episode and the following episode. I know. This whole show is just going to become, in every episode, someone has to go up to a non-binary person and say what a huge fan they are. I know. And that's how we're going to solve the gender wars. So Rock forgot a notebook and she's demand, or sorry, Rock forgot a notebook and and they're demanding (laughs) that Charlotte leave work to come hand it to them at school. And Charlotte's like, no, I'm working. I'm selling a painting that's going to pay for your fucking college. Because you won't do modeling Mm -hmm. when you could have had your own money, but now you could have been a millionaire by now. Yeah. And instead you're sitting here asking me to bring you a notebook you could have literally been independently out of the house moved into your own apartment and had a private jet by now yeah but no but no and you're interrupting me while i'm selling to a superstar and so charlotte calls harry and is like bitch go get this fucking notebook over to her and harry's like no i don't want to do that it's your job you're the woman and then charlotte cracks the whip and harry hops to it so they, they're having brunch. I don't know. I feel like they were at like the, 
Chelsea Spice Market or something. I was like, where is this? Yeah, where is this like gorgeous shopping? I was like, this is like Italy. Yeah. And they're all brunch and then they go look at glasswares. Charlotte, Miranda, Carrie and LTW are having Saturday. It's now Saturday. And Charlotte goes, guys, she goes, Lisa, do you want to tell everyone your good news? And I was like, oh, my God, she's going to say she's pregnant. And then she goes. I'll say it for you. PBS is extending Lisa's documentary into a 10 part, 10 part series. And then Miranda goes, they're Ken's Ken Burns in you. But what is the documentary about though? You know, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. No one knows. Could anyone give me like a one sentence? I think it's pitch? about like women in the workplace. I know it's about black women. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, but about what though? I think it's about like they're like <laughs> the writers are like don't worry about it. Don't worry so about it. So many things in the show when it came to thinking things through, the general consensus seems to be don't worry about it. I just heard this queen is failing up. She's slaying. Yeah. Except ten. in one area and that's uterine. She's with child and she's pissed about it. Mhm. They're like bitch get an abortion. Yeah. Just go get it. Do you it. already have some. Charlotte gets a call from Lily, who's de- also demanding she leave brunch now. And Charlotte bitches her out. Mm-hmm. And then Carrie finds out that she's won the raffle. Mm-hmm. To have a Michelin star chef cater a dinner at your home for 15 of your closest friends. Wow. <laughs> Carrie says, there's no way I'm inviting 15 people into my brandly new plastered gorgeous apartment in the french quarter yeah of new york <laughs> i'm not flying my i my friends out to new orleans to come to my big old new orleans apartment abode <laughs> so she's, <laughs> but she, she's like so i'll have it in my shitty 2.5 million dollar or no hovel 2.5 5 million dollar hovel in the upper east side mm-hmm as a, as a going away to the famous apartment. And then Carrie talks to Miranda about recently seeing Steve and how magical it was and how amazing Steve is. And I was like, <laughs> you're trying to put Chablis through hell. She's always done that to Miranda about Steve though. Like in, she, she loved them she together. Always, she did love them together, but like she would use it against her a lot. Because Miranda's a fucking bitch to Steve. Yeah, that's true. Like, if I had a friend that was with some guy that was obsessed with her and was, like, a good man, Mm -hmm. and she was always a fucking bitch to him, yeah, I'd be like, I just saw Steve, and everything seems amazing with him. You should talk to him. You know what episode I just watched that I forgot about that's such a good episode when Carrie is dating Justin Theroux, Mm -hmm. and she basically is dating his mom. And they had to break up. And it's so like lovely and sweet. That's a classic app. That was the best relationship Carrie had the whole series. Yeah. Was with his mom. Mm Mm-hmm. Steve is also like I get I get Carrie being friendly with Steve, but I don't understand. Carrie being friendly with Che. No, no, it's it's because not the Che same thing. is a sociopath. Carrie's and Che also- is like a bounce back, and it's just weird. Like a person like that that came into your life with your friend and your friend dated that was like also your boss. I think you just kind of would be like, I'm phasing this relationship out a bit. Yeah, and also Steve, they have a history, and like they've known each other for 25 years. Yeah, they, Miranda had a kid with this man. Carrie's basically like the godmother to her son like che is a <laughs> che ruined the family she's a terrorist they broke up her family an emotional terrorist narcissistic took miranda away on a wild goose chase to los angeles and is now a vet tech <laughs> so it's like you aren't friends with that person che is at the vet clinic and i just love that che's acting like Literally three months ago, they weren't starring in their own pilot with Tony Danza. How quickly the mighty have fallen. They're just like, those old Hollywood nights. <laughs> That's not who I am anymore. It's like, that was a month ago. You could still leverage this. 
No, but no one should be encouraging Che. No, I know. I'm che just... does not deserve a place in Hollywood or in entertainment in general mm-hmm. because they aren't like a get up and go kind of personality. They... They're not ma- a self starter. They're not making things happen for themselves. Mm-mm. Instead, they're just like defaulting to vet tech life. And when people do that, you should let them mm-hmm. and then just kind of let them peter out. Mm-hmm. Chase never made me lol. No. Miranda's made me lol. Like if Che were a real, like a hysterical comedian that had me like in tears and then went through a rough time and ended up a vet tech, I'd be like, someone should encourage them to like get back up on that stage. Like there's a lot to be like trying for, like don't let this get you down. Mm -hmm. But when someone is genuinely bad at what they do, entertainment speaking, and then they decide to go down the path of vet tech, you just let them. It's better. It's a natural progression. That's best. It's everyone benefits Mm -hmm. from that progression. Mm -hmm. No one wins when you encourage the not funny people and untalented people to like keep trying. But Che's getting back up on that horse because they're writing new jokes to impress the to impress the for vendetta Toby. <laughs> you know what's really fun though? What watching multiple scenes of Che correcting people who misuse <laughs> their pronouns. That is, I don't know about you, but that is really grade A, <laughs> fun, entertaining. Dare I say, like, riveting television to watch. I have to say, the vet clinic manager is giving cunt. Oh, absolutely. She's amazing. She should have a one she, I'd show. watch. I want, I want to encourage her to be a comedian. She should, yeah. The, the way things should go is that she says, when is your show? And Che says, I, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. What if you got up there? What if you told your story? And then it just totally switched to then the manager yeah, getting up there and finding her footing as like a storyteller. And that would be the the best possible outcome of Che's entertainment career. I would watch that show. 100%. Um, Anthony and Giuseppe are having gay sex woes because Anthony won't bottom Mm -hmm. because he has... Shame. He's an ass virgin. Giuseppe's, he reveals that he's never been fucked in the ass. And Giuseppe's truly shocked. It's a really sad life. If you make it all the way to your 50s and you haven't been fucked in the ass, the clock is ticking. You don't have much time left and you got to get on it. But this actually felt like kind of, I like realistic. Oh, I like this storyline a lot. This is a really specific but true. And I think especially like, I mean, a lot of gays, a lot of queer men like of any age have this issue. But like gay men of a certain age who like went through the 80s, probably Mm -hmm. even more. Oh, true, true. I mean, maybe I'm like just everything goes to AIDS. But I think that on top of like times were different. There's probably, you know, more like internalized homophobia, but also like that whole period probably made everything like, you know what I mean? Well, and also just the traditional gender roles of a relationship. Like it's interesting that those seem to like play out in most relationship dynamics. Yeah. Like you choose to have one person is, and even in like straight relationships, one person is the man and the other person is the woman. Yeah. Weird. Somehow this little storyline has become the most realistic, like love story of the whole season. I like it. I'm not. I'm still not necessarily buying their chemistry, but no, I'm liking them. But just like I mean, in terms of their like their frankness and like what they're talking about, feels more realistic than like. Giuseppe's a little too much of like a dream man. Yeah, he's like a Mary Sue, mm-hmm. where he's just like. I can, I'd let him fuck me in the ass. Me too. But I'm just like, I think that they seem the most like watchable somehow. Romantic. Invested. Well, they're the only like normal romantic relationship to invest in right now. 
Because we can't trust Aiden and Carrie. No, they're, when we've seen it already, we know where this is going. Like, even if you don't know, you know mm-hmm. that it's going to end badly for them. Mm-hmm. But, like, this is, like, the only shred of hope. Mm-hmm. So, Anthony needs to douche, lube, Use a dildo. foreplay, and just make it happen. Just You'll, <laughs> trust me, you'll like it. Yeah, and also just, like, work yourself for, like, a week leading up to it. Or let Giuseppe, even better, let him do all the work. Yeah. He says he's gentle. Let him prep. My thing is, if someone is really like, I want to fuck you in the ass, then they they are now the captain of the Mm -hmm. ass ship and they have to do all the, Mm -hmm. your responsibility is to make sure the landing is like clean for them. Mm -hmm. But then it's their responsibility to do all all the work leading up to the actual penetration. I would say yes, but I also say the bottom is the captain. Well, in terms of like a green light, red light, but like I'm saying (laughs) in terms of like getting Mm -hmm. the ass ready (laughs) to take the dick, they are the captain now. Giuseppe goes, well, we're going to have to change that. And then takes a sip of his bedside martini. (laughs) I was like, okay. <laughs> Seema and her guy are fucking, and Reba. Is that his name? Reba? Reba. <laughs> Ravi, I Ravi. think. Ravi. Ravi goes, I love you. And Reba. Seema says, I love you too. She says, I love you first. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, this seems like zero cal- character development, but love that. Yeah. <laughs> Go off. Um, Carrie sold the apartment her apartment to the girl down to Lisette for 500, like a thousand dollars. Lisette is so unhinged and unwell that I'm like, she needs to be 51 15. But the deal she just got is unbelievable. Did they say how much she sold? No, it but for? I'm sure it was like, Carrie's like, whatever you can give me. Yeah. Like, Carrie doesn't need to... Well, see. Carrie's rich. She doesn't need No, I know. It. It's just like, damn, bitch. I know. Even Seema's like, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> Lisette. <laughs> Lisette is, though, like, there's something incredibly, like, unwell about her. Is yeah, it just but- that she's a horrific actress? <laughs> it's a little bit that, but it's a little bit, like, whomst is this girl? Whomst. Well, I was really thinking, like, there... For a second, I was like, is this going to be the whole show? Like, Carrie and this girl's kind of, like may december friendship the show loves to make you think that (laughs) something like Mm -hmm. that will happen Mm -hmm. and then that never happens so this girl just got the gift of a lifetime a basically free apartment paid for and she in her name and she owns it i'm also though like why are you lingering around this lady's apartment and being like can i have whatever is in your closet and then Carrie's like, sure, there's like some old bras and hangers in there. Have at it. But like, whatever else, just let me know. That's like a nicety thing that someone says, dude. And she's like, well, what about that rotary phone? And then she's like, no. And she's like, well, I'm not mad at those. I'm like, bitch, that's art. You can't just like have people's art. She's a little Manson girl. I think that Carrie Loki had to sell to Lizette because she was like, that's the only way to make sure this girl doesn't like kill herself outside of my new place or me like she's a liability and it's better to know where she is at all times Mm -hmm. so as a tactical measure i'm gonna sell her my apartment for five (laughs) dollars that is crazy that's like unheard of i love seeing you being like get the fuck out you don't get sushi you got the deal of a lifetime yeah it's like i can tell i'm not one of the years yeah Free jewelry for life for the two of you. Free jewelry for the life. <laughs> it's like, girl, get I don't out want of your, here. Get lost. I don't want your trinkets. Get out of here. <laughs> this, you just got a $5 million apartment for $1,000. Yeah, shut the fuck thousand up. Dollars. Don't linger. Also, if don't someone linger. gave me that deal, I'd be like, thank you. And I wouldn't speak to them again until we were like exchanging the keys. I would not ask for a single thing. No, I'd be like, you've done enough and I cannot appreciate you more. Like let me get out of your hair and like give you all the respect and space you need to like transition out of this living period. I would also like, if I really wanted this and like wanted to remain in New York and had this apartment in my name that one day, (laughs) no, I would like give a cut of for the rest of my life of everything I made to the person who sold it to me. 
But not if it's like a fucking. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Carrie Bradshaw has like a hundred mil. I know, I know, I know. She's probably like five hundred million dollars. I know. Miranda meets a Miranda's walking out of the UN building and she meets this like kind of chic diplomat lesbian. Who's going to be the next love interest? I know it. And I said, love Joy. is abound at the UN. God, all you have to go do is go to the UN. And it's there that you will find answers. Love. Who is she? Like a secretary or like a... Who is anyone in what does literally <laughs> anyone do on this show? Because I was like, is she a diplomat or is she like a... Legal? She's a legalese. She liaising between two countries she's there to wear long coats and forcefully shake hands mm-hmm. and walk in with purpose and she, walk out feeling like yeah. mission accomplished you know who she was giving saffron burrows mm-hmm. um che is smoking a joint and watching <laughs> their comedy reel went back before they were came out as non-binary when they were presenting as going by female pronouns Cheryl Diaz Cheryl <laughs> Cheryl Diaz and she they're wearing a wig I I, I can't even articulate Che watching their <laughs> own comedy being like was literally me listening to sup in the car the day that it comes out so we see when Che was a woman her, her she first, was still horrible at comedy yeah. She wasn't funny then and wasn't funny now. <laughs> it's literally just Sodom Ramirez wearing a wig and joking about like being married to a man. Joking about dating men and not being able to eat food on dates. Was Honestly, I was like, that's funnier than <laughs> what's, what's happening now. I was just like, not... I wrote not this sad music that came in like the moment she saw. Yeah. I was like, well sad music should be playing throughout your entire comedy career because it's so bad. Where's the laughter? Where's the applause? Where's the applause? Where's the laughter? It didn't seem like anyone liked Cheryl Diaz's comedy. Except one Netflix executive said, we've got to get this Che Diaz a fucking special. No, I'm saying when they were she... The the laughter in the room at the Laugh Factor or whatever, or Caroline's or... Che maybe was realized that they'd have a better run if they went non-binds. And it really did work out for them. This Literally not- everyone in their life tells them, you are so funny. Get back up. Che Diaz has not run... The, she, the, They've had one problem their entire comedy career, and it's a very common problem in the entertainment industry, which is that you do a pilot and it doesn't go. Mm-hmm. That's like very run of the mill. I'd but say you're you've succeeded. In I'd life. say you're fairly successful. If you have a pilot that doesn't that tapes but doesn't error, you still made it, baby. You've done something. That's Hollywood. And you just gotta keep on going. But Che Diaz runs into one thing, but then it doesn't matter because Literally everyone that crosses paths with them is like, you're an inspired, (laughs) hilarious person. You need to get back up on that stage and start writing jokes because I am going to fucking unalive if I don't hear another Che Diaz classic bit. Every time someone sees them, they're like, you are the most revolutionary comedic voice in the last 50 years. Every time someone sees Che Diaz, they go... You're the Richard Pryor of our are time. You, are you that comic Che Diaz? Are you Che Diaz? Are you? Che cannot walk 10 steps without someone recognizing them as though they're Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Honestly, though, Che Diaz at this point, if I, I bet would be is more famous than Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Pro- che is more on the, the scene. The character, mm-hmm. in our reality, I mean, Che Diaz is like more of a household name these days than mm-hmm. Angelina Jolie. Okay, wait. I need to talk about Naya like flipping out on her computer. Miranda comes home from her big busy day at the UN, mm-hmm. and Naya's freaking out. First over the Michelin chef. This woman's just emotionally all over the map. 
Yeah, because she has a. She lives in a series of like <laughs> highest highs and the lowest lows. Well, also all in one has, conversation. She has like a grifter living in her house who's <laughs> older than her, and is like her student. A divorce. She's basically like been reversed Sarah Lawrence, where yeah. a student has now come to live <laughs> with her, who's like I like the student is older and is like I'm gonna live with you now. <laughs> I would be upset too. Miranda is Tedro- my Miranda's me- Tedrosing Naya a bit. <laughs> she is. I be- my husband left me for like an annoying girl who wears fedoras. Fedoras and, and prairie skirts. And immediately got knocked up. And I have a <laughs> I have a alcoholic bisexual woman living in my home. Things are bad. Things are really grim. Yeah. And not paying. No, I'm letting this bitch ride for free <laughs> in the music room. Um, yeah, she freaks out on her computer. And she buys like a $900 stroller as like a spite gift, which I was like, I guess you got it like that, but I would. She's I'm like, every all- time I want her, every time I want that girl and Andre Rashad to put their baby in the stroller, I want them to think of me. Her energy is very manic is all I'm saying. Yeah, I think, I think she's going through something. Mm-hmm. I think she's. You know, potentially a s- needs slaw, maybe. Uh, or I think just needs to be in another LTR. Or just needs to get away from this friend group. Because I think they're... They're, they're sucking the life out of her. No, I think they're just passing She's gotten on. more and more unhinged as the season, as the series has yeah. gone on. And I do blame it on this friend group. Her friends that she... Her actual friends seemed like really normal and fun. I would maybe go hang out with them more. And get away from these... Remember when they FaceTimed her once and they were like, hey, it's been forever since we've seen you. <laughs> Can we hang with you and have a slumber party on Valentine's Day? And she's like, no, I'm going to be alone and then no. hang out with LTW and Miranda. Charlotte. <laughs> she just calls them by their first names to her friends. She's no. like, oh, no, I'm going to Carrie's Michelin star dinner. They're like, we... <laughs> Who's you know Carrie? when people do that where they'll just say yeah, a first that's, name? Mara, that's, that's the most psychotic thing that a person can do <laughs> is refer to someone else no, by their first name in front of a person that has no idea who they're talking about. When I tell you, listeners, that that is 30% of Los Angeles, it is. <laughs> I'd say about every one out of every 10 people I interact with does that. They're like, God, I'm, and it's just like Brian says, like, just you, say no. You know what I mean? And you're like, who's that Brian? Me, that happens to me more than I'd like, which is like, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> but people will just be like, yeah, we were just like, Rand was just, Randy was just like, we went to Randy's house. And mm-hmm. it's like, who? Who? Am I, am I supposed to know this person? I'm always a little bit like whomst as well. It's very just like it's complete narcissism. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that to anyone. No. Um, Things to be proud of. Wait, breaking news. Danny what? Masterson sentenced to 30 years. Good. To life. Criminal. Yeah. Rotten hail. Rotten hail. Um, Ugh, my gel nail just came off. I'm sorry. I'm going to set it down here. LTW and Herb discuss her getting an abortion and she's like no i'm gonna keep it she goes but i'm happy to know that that's an option i'm like what's an option you never said the word abortion yeah i love speaking in like very cloaked terms that feels very it's like we can always go get the uh it's like revolutionary road yeah it's it's just very like 1950s we can always go down and get it taken care of they go if you need to you know, <laughs> that's, it's all your choice. Yeah. I'm also like fucking God damn it, Herbert. Why didn't you get that vasectomy? That infuriated me. Yeah. You did this. This is your fault. Mm-hmm. Carrie has Anthony come over for martinis, which she used to do with Stanford. And the- back when they would, I love when they would smoke and drink martinis. I know. And. She's like, I need you to sit down. They had to do this. <laughs> they, had to get, goes, they had to do it to him. She goes, I got a letter from Stanford. And uh, and he's like, oh, how's he doing in Japan with that like 12-year-old? And she's like, well, he's since left managing and he's now 
a monk. He's a Shinto monk. A Shinto. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Shinto monk. A Shinto monk. <laughs> I was trying to do the Philly accent. He's a Shinto monk and he's abandoned all of his belongings and possessions and former identity and he's living on a monastery now. She goes, look. And it's a picture. A, see, it, it a was really... The <laughs> photo? Like, who... Who did this? So, yeah, Stanford has become a monk. He's living in a monastery and he is like the happiest he's ever been. This was bizarre. I'm sorry. It was a little bit weird. I know that they needed to do something, but they could have maybe also just like sent the divorce papers. I don't know. It's sad. But then when SJP drank the whole thing and like winked at him, I was like, God, my girl. I know. My girl's winking. So she's like, he wanted me to tell you, which I'm like, that should, he should have written a letter. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony's shocked. They kind of laugh a little bit. Then it's also sad. Cause sad. Because you can see Carrie. Sarah Jessica Parker was probably actually getting emotional about. Well, yeah. And she probably is like, I need to do a whole scene to like pay homage to Willie Garson. But it's also like, this scene's weird. <laughs> but also i'm like but this you is guys, the future for every game you know i'm gonna adopt the same vibe which is don't worry about it don't Honestly, worry about it but she has is, a cat now don't <laughs> worry about it carrie brad's a cat owner seems to don't worry about it don't worry about it yeah but this is the future of every gay man you go being with, told that you're getting no, you, divorced you, by your <laughs> former, no you become a your mom former lovers <laughs> You just go into it. Best move. girlfriend? <laughs> no. You, <laughs> you just become you a monk. You either become a monk or your husband does and then his best fag hag invites you over for drinks and tells you that you're divorced now. <laughs> That's incre- that is the future of all gay relationships. <laughs> is just know this. One day, <laughs> That's like you your like, partners... Like, come on over. That's me to Simon going... <laughs> I need you to come over right now. (laughs) And he gets over to my house and he's like, why? This is strange. Like, why are you having me over? And I'm like, we need to talk about your attitude. Also, Carrie's divorcing you. He wants, he says, everything's in your name now. All his possessions. He goes, what possessions? I go, exactly. He has none. He had none before, but he certainly has none now. (laughs) He's a Shinto monk. See, here's the photographic evidence. Cheers. Goodbye. (laughs) And then, then <laughs> that's just another one back to the dust. That's how it goes. That's how it goes in gay I world. Like, I feel like when I first came out, my parents would have preferred this would be my future to go be a monk instead of <laughs> They go, what's it, Carrie? Can't you just go be a monk? Can't you, Can't you, be you just be a monk? Shinto monk? <laughs> please, please. <laughs> they would have loved. Oh, man. So Anthony's like, okay, that was weird. He's like, great. Well, I guess I'll get guess fucked I, in the ass. <laughs> for my 10-inch cock boyfriend. <laughs> Good thing I'm with like the hottest Italian yeah. guy who's like obsessed with me and is wants to blast my whole <laughs> outer space. Life could be worse. Good luck That's standing. the best case scenario of any goes, separation or divorce I've ever heard of. He goes, is he happy? And Carrie goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he goes, can I see, can I take the letter? And she goes, no, I'm keeping it. I was like, what? No, that's for me. That is, that's how it goes. I would be like, uh, okay. Uh -uh. Gay men have no, in this world, gay men have have no agency. They have no agency and they're all devoted to their, their girls. Yeah. They're (laughs) ex-partners. Best hag. She gets all the pics and the letters. I'm keeping those. I'm going to hang on to this. He's like, okay, that was my husband, but thanks, Queen. <laughs> so, great. And she's like, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> you have no right. In this world, marriage was never... <laughs> no. Marriage never got codified. Um, so Carrie is going to invite 15 people to her last supper dinner. And, but before that, 
They all head to, to over to Brooklyn for a comedy show. The comedy show. Che's Big huge comeback. comeback. Um, che gets up. I love Che's writing, still writing at the bar, <laughs> writing their act. And someone comes over and they're like, you ready, Che? And Che's like, ready as I'll ever be. I'm like, if it's this difficult for you, give up. Give up. You have a job. You just got to move back to Hudson Yards. Like, life is good. There's no reason to put yourself through hell again. So then Che heads up to the stage and just basically shits on Miranda. Well, so Miranda comes and joins Carrie and Aiden in line. Oh, yeah, because Aiden's really good Imagine friends with Imagine seeing, Chad. like, being in the, on the Brooklyn comedy scene, <laughs> and you're, like, at a show, and then you see Carrie and Aiden in line and then to Miranda, go to the show. And then, and the then suddenly... Shibli shows <laughs> You're like, oh my god. Shibli goes, I, yeah, you know, I just don't want to throw my exes out anymore. Like, and cut mm. off all communication. I'm going to be chill. I'm going to be a cool girl. So mm. I'm here. I'm going to surprise Che. And Carrie goes, oh, okay. And then Aiden's like, also, if you were Carrie and you're best friends with Che Diaz, wouldn't you tell Miranda, like, I think that you might not want to stick around for this. Like, they're probably going to shit on you or like i'll bet you're a huge no, part that, of their of course act not. <laughs> let them just you let them just see you're like hmm i mean do you think che called carrie up and was like i'm gonna fucking shit all over your best friend i think that they talk a lot yeah. carrie seems to be like she was che helping- brought a cat over to carrie's house and left it there oh my god maybe she was maybe carrie was help punching up che's jokes about miranda also, Aiden, I love Lest Aiden. you forget, Carrie and Trey, like, traveled together this season. Like, they are very close now. Where'd they travel to? To that Widow's Con. Widow oh, con. I thought that was in New York. It was just, there was, was a blizzard. Snowy. Okay, but they, they did travel. <laughs> they traveled. traveled. <laughs> they traveled. To me, that felt very, like, they went yeah, on they an went epic, to, they went on an epic went to Philadelphia. journey to, together. Mm-hmm. Um, so... And of course, Aiden's there because he's also now best friends with Che. Mm -hmm. And then Che, I have to say there were a few jokes that... You loved. I was like, this is at least... I I didn't didn't laugh. I didn't laugh at Mm -hmm. one, but I had... I was like, this is at least better comedy. She just shits on Chablis. Just someone... I think letting a queer person be like vicious in their comedy is like at least better than like... You've been like, radicalized by Che. No, it was a d- only a matter of time. No, it's 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 more like I was like, okay, they're on their way to something. Because like, if you don't know what to do, just be mean. That gets laughs. But not. I know, not at the expense of Shibli. No, I'm just saying it's like the comedy just icks me out. Still, it was, ick. it was super ick. But I was like, not behold the mayo. What? She goes, I'll take a side. She didn't know who she was. I'll take a side of bye. Hold the mayo. I was like. <laughs> yeah, they were just like, they were just so mean. They were like. They were too mean. It wasn't like, funny. Yeah, she ruined her fucking kid's life. She brought four people into the relationship. Her, her husband, her son. I was like, no, she didn't. She actually like really didn't bring them in because you took her away from them. And then Miranda's just sitting there. <sighs> she's like, she I gotta is. go. And then Carrie goes. <sighs> I love Carrie just passive being like, nothing I could have done. <laughs> and then Chase sees Miranda. So he, they they chase Hobbs outside into the cobblestone Brooklyn street. Chase Miranda. Wraps up after a tight three. <laughs> They do a tight three and they're like, hey, there's more people. They're like, there's some real up and coming comics here that need more time. So I'm going to give my spot to them. I love. And then Che runs out and goes, Miranda. And Shibli goes, not funny. Not funny. And it was very like old Shibli. Mm -hmm. It was very like sundown Shibli. I did like, I was imagining if Che came out and just sounded like Steve somehow. Miranda. (laughs) And they leave them. Miranda's like, fuck you. I'm never speaking to you again. Mm -hmm. And so she gets in a cab and goes off. And then I wish Miranda had just like ripped Che a new one on the street. Che needs to be like given the what's what. Miranda could have been like, I'm funnier. I I have more humor in like my fingernail than you do in your whole body. 
Miranda could have been like, I changed my entire life to follow you. And at least I knew what I want. You're fucking unemployed. You're like, you're a loser. Is what she could have said. She could be like, I'm a Harvard graduate. I've stood by (laughs) you and I loved you when you were Che Diaz on this comedy concert. (laughs) And I loved you when you were Che Diaz, star of the, the pilot, Che's world. And I loved you when you were fired and when you were just a vet tech. Which and I would have right I would have followed you all over the place. I even followed you here to this shithole. Sat through your bullshit. No more. No more. Fuck you. And she could have really torn. And that's what Che needs to hear. Che's not a humble no. person. I was like, Che's in a permanent victim mindset. Che thinks that... The, this kind of comedy, like being mean to someone on stage and like criticizing them in an unfunny way is like when Miranda takes umbrage with that, Che's immediate response is to be like, why, God, why do I have to ex- keep explaining myself to people? I'm constantly trying to have to tell people who I am and what I'm about. It's like, <laughs> no, that's not what this is about at all. And then there's always someone waiting in the wings. Toby comes Toby's, out. There's always someone to be like, don't worry, you're so hot. And Toby was like, you're amazing. They go, there's nothing hotter than a strong NB person. So they validate <laughs> everything. <laughs> they fully validate Che's ter- terroristic comedy against someone who gave up their life for this person. And instead are like, you're amazing. Don't listen to that bitch. Everything you do is Everything valid. Everything you do is valid. You just... You're incredible. You don't have to... You you're don't owe an explanation... You're a victim. ...to anyone. And you're the victim of everyone. And, and that's like, that. And can goes, I just take a walk with you? I can't argue you? with that. She <laughs> goes, you know what? You're fucking right. And then... <laughs> Why do I keep having to explain myself to everyone? I love being like, God, what you said really hurt my feelings. It's fucked up that you would do these after like this relationship. And then instead of being like, yeah, that it's like really fucked up that I said these things like about this person instead of just like trying, instead of just having a fucking goddamn like sliver, a moment of humility, you're like, the fuck? (laughs) God, fuck. I'm always, fuck I'm, always I'm so to, fucking tired of explaining myself to everyone every fuck. single person in my life i just have to explain myself to them over and over i feel like i'm coming out every single day i step outside i have to come out of the closet if you feel like that if that's your life experience where you feel like every day you're fighting for your goddamn life to explain yourself to mm-hmm. people you're the problem not you're them. the problem is you it's you hi it's you're the you are the problem God, I, I just hate. Fuck. Why do I always have to explain everything to everyone at all times? Everyone's under interrogation with me all the time. You need help. Yeah, but then, then and, this, and then and then Miss Vendetta not, and then Miss <laughs> Mad Max comes out and goes. They go, oh, you were so amazing out there. I thought you were great. I thought your comedy was incredible and i thought you you were revolutionary and let me just tell let you let me just tell you there's nothing stronger there is nothing hotter <laughs> nothing hotter than a strong nb person nothing nothing not a goddamn thing so you get back up on that stage and you light her ass up <laughs> You continue. You tear goes, down oh, her ass. I want you to I'm do it. I'm sorry. A- I didn't ask you if you were comfortable with being called NB. And Che goes, I'm comfy. Did, wait, and then, did they, did they yes. Go? And then Toby goes, that's great. <laughs> Toby goes, mind if I walk with you down the street? And Che goes, hell yeah. And they start walking. And Che goes, oh, I left my notebooks in there. Whatever, fuck it. And I was like, this person does not need to be in comedy. <laughs> enough is enough. They're leaving their material. Isn't that the comics like most treasured possession is their little joke book? <laughs> this, this, this person's just leaving it all there. Fuck, I forgot my notebook. She goes, oh, fuck it. <laughs> it's like, my God. This person gets away with it. Murder. Che Diaz could literally kill what someone. Che, what if Che and this person? 
when they just start like robbing banks. They would, and people would be like, "You're under arrest." God damn it! You're making me explain myself. Enough's enough. Like, che goes right. into trial for their crimes, and there the judge is like, "You know what, Your Honor? I don't think my client." I don't think my clients should have to explain themselves to the court or to anyone. And <laughs> everyone says, you know what? You're right. Your client is valid. And there is nothing hotter, nothing than a strong envy person. If it's okay to call him that. And then Che gets off. Che could go live a life of crime and get away with everything. Must be nice. Must be fucking nice. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Charlotte's being terrorized by her family. Charlotte goes out and gets drunk with the girl. Charlotte. Charlotte goes out. And gets, Charlotte sells. Charlotte sells a, some art. She sells a million dollars worth of Alex Israel profile art, and then goes to celebrate with the work girlies and just gets a little smash. Does a little coke. Mm-hmm. Maybe does a little ketamine. Of ketamine. I think a little ketamine to come down yeah. afterwards. And, and then, she throws her phone in a blender because she's like, God, I'm sick of my fucking needy ass family. I've slaved for them for years. And this is the thanks I get. They text me all the time. And then when she gets home, I was like, her Lily goes, mom, you're gross. You're disgusting. She comes home because she's drunk and her everyone's up waiting that, for her. I was like, Charlotte needs to hereditary them. Yeah. I am your mother. Don't this you what, dare lose your little shit. This is when this moment also, I was like, Kristen could get nominated for an Emmy for this moment. I love that you think that. <laughs> <laughs> I you know You're watch- like God. I hope the Emmy Awards in in twenty twenty six twenty twenty four really honor her in this moment. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope you I love get. That she comes I home. All your- she comes home and just like playfully is like taking her like coat off and just like oh it's like seven p.m. She was out for an hour. Took. 12 shots mm-hmm. she had to maximize her time and then harry and the daughters are like oh we were up dinner's Ter- cold had to order out because worried you about here. you we were worried and then she goes what i just sold like a million dollars worth of commission like i'm letting my hair down it's a thursday night i went out with the girlies what do you want me to do and then lily goes you're disgusting Ugh, you're so gross i was like you're a fucking you're a f- slut pig <laughs> you're you are slut you are a slut pig, pig. You made your mom. You tramped all over fucking town. You made your I mom. I got your condom so you could lose your fucking virginity. Then you went and you're going to turn my around. my best friend's son. You're going to turn around and call me gross? Get out of my house. Yeah. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. Go busk. <laughs> Grimes. This is why we don't have kids. I know. <laughs> that's, no, that's, I, I've never said to my mom, you're gross. Me either. That's I mean. would lock. Lily in a basement. It's time. I would go like this. And Harry's like, yeah. He is like, you're fucking gross. This is when Charlotte, I was praying to God, she'd be like, I'm leaving. Charlotte should have a leave. I think she really should. She, you know what? Fuck you all. I'm going to go stay at the Bowery Hotel. Let's like ramp things up season six, part B style, where everyone gets like a very high stakes storyline. Remember when Samantha had cancer, Carrie's moving to Paris, Miranda's mother in law's sundown eating pizza out of the garbage. Kristen. Kristen. Charlotte, sorry. Is. Char can't get pregnant and can't get adopt a baby to save her damn life. And I, every, the stakes this, seem really high. Don't you think in this moment it would have been appropriate? She's like, you know what? You guys can fend for yourself for a minute. I'm going to go do my thing. Going to go Airbnb a place near my gallery and live a downtown life for a minute. That would have been great. I think that... Fleischman is in trouble. It would have been a really powerful Charlotte storyline if she got the job back early on and then woke up had like, like that crisis of, oh my God, like this is what I wanted for so long and it's actually like... Killing my soul. Yeah. And I need space from these fucking bloodsuckers. You're gross. God, mom, you're gross. Aiden Wyatt, and Carrie are in a king size. And, then and things are seemingly good. They were like, that was a great show. 
<laughs> Chase, co- they were like, Chase comedy really killed tonight. Chase slayed tonight, don't you think? That tight three where she <laughs> awkward, they awkwardly ran off the stage afterwards was incredible. And then all of a sudden, he gets a call from his ex-wife. And she's, he's like, hey, what's up? And he goes, oh. Oh, no. All right. Well, I'll get, I'll get the next flight. <sighs> Wyatt he, drove a truck into a tree and broke his collarbone. Wyatt went full and Hathaway and Rachel getting married. <laughs> I love Carrie going like, but why does he have your truck? Like, I love her not understanding. Yeah. She was audience proxy. He goes, he's really chill about it. He's like, yeah, I got to go get back to Norfolk. Well, I think it's like he didn't think it was that big of a deal yeah. at first. Just wait. And then LTW comes into the bedroom, rouses her up and goes, hey, I'm miscarrying. She went into that closet <laughs> and started punching herself in the oh stomach. <laughs> She's like, I got this 10 parter. She's like, I, I got to win. I don't want to get you. You know, but. I don't want to have this baby. I don't want to get an Emmy. So. Um, yeah. So she goes, he goes, well, we'll go to the hospital. She goes, it's over. It's too late. It's gone. Trust. He's like, all right, cool. Yeah. And then she's like, great. Um, I don't understand. So K- Char, no. Miranda calls Carrie and is like, hey, I'm not coming to your dinner because Che is going to be there. And we fought on the street last night after they said horrific things about me. Not only is Che going to be there, my ex-husband's going to be there. Yeah. So it just feels like feels I could like- tolerate him, but having both of them there, they don't want to see each other. Like, that's... Oh, wait. That is actually very right? strange. Like, I'm sure Steve would- doesn't want to see the person that he probably... That Miranda equates, left him yeah. for. Carrie. Carrie's wild. She's a shit fucking stir for that. And she's like, you're coming. I'm sorry. And Miranda's like, no, it's really uncomfortable for me and painful. And Carrie's like, you will come to this last supper with these random people that I've assembled in my life. So you will come with the 16 people that we've been hanging out with for the past year and a half, three years. And you'll like it. And you'll like it. And you'll stay. And Miranda goes, Okay. I'm going to say right now that when John Corbett cries, I laugh. (laughs) You know what my mom said? What? She went, she she goes, that whole part, she goes, I went, suck it up. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, it's very, she goes, why are you crying? I was like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> women I'm finding what other women out there are having no bandwidth for this man's tears he I should have been there I should have been there he's like he was on drugs so Wyatt went to his mom's was a fucking little piece of shit to his mom hitchhiked to the house to his dad's house where then he literally went Jackson Maine at his dad's house, drank a bunch of beers, and then was like, I'm going to get in this truck. And, and they then he took shrooms. What? I think he took drugs, too. He says. Did he? Yeah. I'll look it up. <laughs> I didn't catch that, but. He took mushroom, magic mushrooms. He took mushrooms and before drank. he. Yeah, and he was drinking. Before he had an altercation with his mom. I think so. <laughs> You're fan fictioning no. right now. Are you Googling, did Wyatt take mushrooms? Yeah. Yeah, magic mushrooms. He was high on magic mushrooms, Entertainment Weekly. This is dramatic. Right? So he's like... So he fucking flipped out on mushrooms, screamed at his mom, hitchhiked on mushrooms to Aiden's house where he got in, drank a bunch of beers, and then got in the truck and plowed the truck into a tree broke his collarbone and his leg that's one way to fuck up a relationship for your dad yeah when something like that happens though and you're dating someone older with kids you have to let go let god Mm -hmm. and you can't be like involved in their weird family shit do you ever see the movie joshua with timothy chalamet no with um Sam Rockwell and Vera Farmiga. 
No. They're like an, they're like an up they're like an Upper East Side New York family, and the son is like a terror, mm-hmm. and no one believes the parents, and he's like a maniac, but he's like a prodigy, and then you find at the end he's just trying to get rid of all them so he can have the uncle to himself. Is it like a thriller? Yeah. Who's the uncle? Some gay. He has like a incesty kind of. No, lust. like he, the uncle doesn't know that he's like obsessed with him. But the young gay has like, an incestual lust think, for the yeah, uncle. I think so. Wow, sounds good. But I was like, this is Wyatt. Wyatt is up to no fucking good. But if you're smart, you get out of that sitch. Carrie's like, oh. Carrie's like, oh, Amy. just like that. Just like that. I like her going, bones heal. They do. And just like that, Wyatt drove his car into a tree while high on <laughs> mushrooms. While high on mushrooms and drunk on beer. And, and broke his collarbone and his leg in two places. And I'm inviting 15 people I don't know that well into my house. This is for the best. You don't. I don't know what happens ultimately in the finale because I've only gotten halfway through it and then yeah. fell asleep, but... Yeah, it's for the best. They're they're not meant to be. They're not. They're and not. You don't want that kid in your house. No. Not in your brand new not beautiful. Quarter. You don't want this kid. You don't know what this kid is even capable of. No, he'll set it on fire. He'll start he like a will, three block fire. Yeah, it's best to just like Cut you don't want him anywhere off. near your yeah. living space. He will pollute it energetically. You'll she'll meet someone else. She absolutely will, or she'll meet no one and be fine. Yeah. She can be with her girls. She can go back to Sam. Well, just wait. Okay. Well, let's do a cult shout out. Let's do it. Jeffrey Pratima. 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 Kim Lucas. Lucas. Emily. Emily. Nick Sedieris. Nick Sedieris. Kit Moore. Moore. Rochelle Martino. Martino. Kathy West. Kelliger. Mariah Kay. Ray. Owsley. Owsley. Carrie Whitmer. Whitmer. Courtney Kesselman. Kesselman. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Mike Earhart. Earhart. Maisie McCarney. Maisie McCarney. Mary. Mary. Malzatov. Malzatov. Lady Swamp, which gives, gives no, no fucks. fucks. And Danielle McMillan. McMillan. Thank you so cool. much. Love and light. And we'll be back with the finale recap of Just Like That Season 2 shortly. Next week. Stay tuned. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye.